Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tom Cat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I have another Distashify video for you. So as a reminder, I am an ambassador for Distashify, which is a online, um, it's a website where you can buy and sell things from other people's stashes. So it's like an eBay or, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, kind of like an eBay, strictly for patterns, fabric, yarn, um, sewing notions, crafting notions, that sort of thing. Now, um, I am so excited to try. I've not sold anything on there yet, but I've got, I've been calling some of my yarn stash and my patterns a little bit, and I want to go through my fabric um, to be selling things as well, um, hopefully over this winter. Um, and I will definitely let you guys know <laughs> when I do that. But um, as a part of the brand ambassador, it's just kind of a way to bring awareness back to the site again. She is going to be doing a whole bunch of um, challenges and stuff like that after the first of the year when everyone's lives have kind of settled back down after the holidays. Um, but I do receive a $50 uh, gift voucher, like a, a gift certificate every month for me to pick out, um, you know, something from the site um, to then make up and then showcase what I've got for the next month. So that's kind of the deal. Um, and I do go over the 50 on occasion and then I'm just paying my own money. This is, it's just such a great idea. Number one, it's great for the environment. Um, it allows you to make sure that your things that you've got are going to you know, other people that are going to love it as much as you do. That's a big one for me, really. Because, you know, other people just don't, maybe don't appreciate like a good, vintage pattern or fabric or whatever. It takes a special person. Um, I just really love the whole idea behind the Distashify and it's so fun to go through and and look. It really combines my love for thrifting and my love for all things fiber. <laughs> it, really, it really combines the two for me. Anyway, I wanted to um, show you what I made with my November picks. So these were the fabrics I got back in November that I talked to you through then and also what I have picked for my December, which is a little different this month. I did something just a little bit different just for a change of pace. So um, yeah, let's delve in. Um, oh, before, I also wanted to mention before, if you are at a place in your life where you have no desire to like sell your stuff, but you don't necessarily want to take it to Goodwill, um, you can contact Casey and she will send you a uh, prepaid envelope for you to, you know, donate your your things if you wanted to, and then she will sell them on the site at thrift store prices. So um, there is there's that going forward. So if that's something that you know you have someone that maybe um, a family member that no longer wants their stash and it's like super overwhelming, um, you know, instead of having to you know take it to Goodwill or another thrift place, you can send it to her. Um, in a prepaid envelope and then she sells it at thrift store prices on the site. So it's just a way of making sure that your things are going to people that are actually going to appreciate them as opposed to just, you know, luck of the draw if someone at Goodwill finds your things. Which I did have a good good Goodwill haul actually this past weekend and there'll be a separate video on that. Okay, so let's dig in. So my first item, I had three fabrics that I got in November. I made three separate things with them. We're gonna talk about those and then I'll show you what I grabbed for my December, um, and I went over my December money this month, <laughs> but I'll show you what I grabbed. All right, so the first thing you guys have already seen, it's the Tessa sheath dress. You guys saw this in, um, Oh, a couple weeks ago now. Uh, this is a cotton spandex jersey that I got um, from Distashify. And actually, all three fabrics that I'm going to be, that I made things with this month, all came from the same seller. Which I think is funny, because obviously people buy colors that they're drawn to for whatever reason. So then when they're getting rid of them, I find it's, I don't know, that I'm like drawn to the same like seller because, you know, maybe we have similar tastes or, you know, the colors are like the same that I'm looking for or whatever. I just think it's kind of funny. So far, since I've been doing this, I feel like I've only bought things from one seller, <laughs> which you can totally buy from different sellers. I, it's just the ones that I pick. It just happened to be all be from the same seller. So, um, this is again, a cotton spandex jersey and these beautiful stripes. We've got like a, a cranberry color, kind of a lilac, a, the red orange that I love. Um, then there's some ivory in there and then some mustard and then that's black, which I don't wear a lot of black, but I think it kind of, it makes a really cool, almost retro feel to the stripe. And I've worn this actually quite a few times. It 
just came out of the um, washing machine. So again, this is the Tessa Sheep Dress by Love Notions. It was recently re-released, so it now has the full bust front. Um, it goes all the way up to the 5X um, sizing now as well. It comes with a scoop. This one I did the scoop neck on. My other two I did the boat neck, um, and I did the facing on this one as opposed to the um, the binding. That I mean, the facing comes with the pattern too, but I had done the knit binding on the other two. So this one's got the facing three-quarter length. I just love this dress so much. It's very comfortable. This is a good, this sheath dress is a good style for my body shape. I'm a rectangle um, with a large bust, so sometimes I can also um, pull things from the apple category as well because of my large bust. Um, it's just a really good silhouette on me, and I have been wearing these, all three of them, a lot. Um, like I said, this one just came out of the washing machine. I also think that, you know, as I'm filming this, it's before Christmas, and I, this, I don't know, this looks like Reed's candy to me a little bit. <laughs> like, I don't know, it feels festive to me. I wore it to a Christmas party, um, with some sewing friends, uh, well, last week, and, um, I don't know, it just feels very festive, and I love it with my red Harper cardigan that you guys saw that I did for my, um, fall wardrobe, which I'm currently, I'm keeping the red in my wardrobe right now, like, pretty high profile, just because it's right before the seasons, and then I think after December, I will really go more towards. You know, this is part of my winter capsule, which the red is not featuring in my winter capsule. Will I still wear, wear red in the winter? Yes. But for the most part, I'll be, you know, wearing the capsule colors. But um, yeah, I love this with that Harper cardigan, and it's just such a fun dress to wear. Um, yeah, really pleased with that one. So that is outfit number one. All right, for dress number two, Two, this is, I think this is a double brush poly because it feels like a double brush poly. I mean, it feels lovely. Um, also from Debbie, the same seller from Deb. And um, obviously it's a vertical stripe. So the stripe itself goes vertical. So selvage to selvage, the stripes run vertical or run parallel to the selvage. Um, which I think is very slimming. And this is the Love Notions Laundry Day Tea Dress. This one is actually a free pattern if you join their Facebook group, the Love Notions Support Group. And I just had never made one up. It's also looking like these are going sideways. They really aren't. I think that my fabric's getting caught on my mannequin, getting caught on Lena here, making the stripes do run straight up and down in center front. Now this is a trapeze style dress, and so it goes out on the sides. And so you do get chevroning at the side seams. Can you kind of see that? Which is fine. I mean, just be aware that that's what the dress pattern does. I was a little hesitant about making this pattern, actually, just because of the trapeze nature. I thought that maybe it would make me look like I was wearing a tent because of my large bust, but I did the size medium. Oh, I forgot to say, the Tessa, I also made a size medium with the full bust um, and shortened it by two inches. Um, this one, I also did the size medium with the full bust, and I also shortened it by two inches, and I think, did I do it at the lengthen and shorten line? Hmm, I can't remember now. If I did it to lengthen and shorten line, or if I just took two inches off the hem. I may have just taken two inches off the hem, but I did it before I cut it out. Um, it hits above the knee. I did the short sleeve because this is going to be my spirit wear dress. <laughs> These colors are very similar to both our high school colors and my son's travel soccer team, um, which technically is more of like a true blue and then gold. Um, but, you know, the navy and gold, you know, it works. <laughs> it's hard to find the true blue and gold. Um... I really wish I would have made more of a concerted effort to match up my stripes here, you know, like I could have done that. It definitely, obviously, will get off as it goes around. I'm kicking myself a little bit about that, but, you know, it's fine. Um, I, um, let's see what else. Short sleeves. The only alteration I made to it was shortening it by two inches. Um, I kind of wish I... I don't know, the short sleeves that where it hits on my arm is not the best. I can wear short sleeves, it just has to hit the sweet spot of my arm. Um, and I also could probably do with maybe, or even if it was a looser sleeve maybe, because um, I mean it's a fitted sleeve, that's just the, I mean, what the pattern is. Um, I think I may go back and, I don't necessarily want a flutter sleeve on it, but I may just go back and add a little bit of width in the sleeve, a little bit of you know, slash and spread it just a hair um, to give me just a little bit more. I have big, like a big bicep too, not because I work out, just because I have large arms, <laughs> but, <laughs> but just to give me a little bit more room. And I think that might be a little bit more flattering and maybe even angle it up to where instead of being a little like straight across my arm, it's a little bit more at an angle. Um, that sometimes can work, but it's a free pattern. And so, and that being said, I do really like the silhouette on me. And I think this is going to be a great easy breezy dress for, um, when I'm sitting at hot soccer games, <laughs> which was the whole purpose of this. Um, and I thought, you know, when he's doing, um, his, 
uh, robot, his, he's in the robot, um, robotics team, um, and when they're doing their, um, competitions and stuff, which will be in this winter, I think this will be nice in a gym, um, where it's hot, and I can just put tights underneath it and wear a layer if I need it or not, you know, like a jacket or a, a cardigan or something like that. Um, my daughter doesn't do much that, you know, that she needs the school spirit wear, but obviously any of her events as well, I've got my dress. So there we have it. I just don't like to wear um, printed words across my chest, you know, that says like caramel <laughs> or whatever. Greyhounds, we're the greyhounds. Um, so this is my way of wearing, um, keep sticking to the mannequin, of wearing um, spirit wear without it being like in your face spirit wear. And I think the vertical stripes are very slimming. So very pleased with this one as well. I will definitely make this pattern again. Maybe do the top. I think the top might be cute. Um, kind of crop it a little bit, not crop it, but um, you know, prop it, just not, I'm not looking to show a midriff off, but I think it'd be really cute under high-waisted pants and skirts. Um, yeah. So yeah, especially for a free pattern, this is a really great one. So that is number two, and now we're off to pattern, or to item number three. Okay, now the third fabric I grabbed is like a cotton interlock jersey. So it's a little bit thicker, um, cotton, and I don't it feels like there's not spandex in it. It feels like it's just, you know, the stretch you get is the mechanical stretch, so um, all cotton, which is fine. And I had originally said that I wanted to do the Closet Core patterns, their um, core t-shirt pattern, which is a free pattern, but I decided against it because I had too much fabric, basically. Um, I didn't I didn't have enough to do the core t-shirt and then have enough to do something else with it, and I didn't want to waste any of the fabric. And then I started thinking, you know, um, even though it's a little bit looser fitting t-shirt, do I want something that heavy? It's short sleeved, so I won't even be wearing it right now. Um, and then I was planning out my fall or my winter um, capsule wardrobe, and I'm using this, this color of camel on there, and I thought, you know what? This would make an excellent Harper cardigan. So that's what I decided to do. I was going to use a different um, sweater knit that I have in my stash that is kind of a pale tan, but I think that this is going to be much better with the colors I'm using in my capsule. I'm very pleased with how this turned out. So this is the Harper Cardigan by Sinclair Patterns. This is another free pattern, which is lovely. This is the third one that I've made. Um, gosh, I can't remember what size I make. Um... <laughs> Um, I know it's the classic length. Um, I'll put the size right here. I'll go look in the pattern. I'll put the size right here um, that I've made. Um, I do the classic length, and I've shortened the sleeves by an inch, and that's all I've done to it. No, I haven't shortened the sleeves because I've used the short file on this one. So Sinclair Patterns, they'll have a short, regular, and tall file for um, a lot of their patterns where that might matter, like pants, dresses, you know, cardigans, that kind of thing. And I used the short one, and it, it is perfect. Um, so yes, that I've done no alterations to this pattern, I, and I've made the classic length. It comes with like a cropped length. Um, there's a duster. I think there's like a mid hip one too. There's one in between the cropped and the classic. So this one obviously, I mean, you can see where it hits on me, but this one's the classic length that it's my favorite one. I've only ever made this one. And there's different sleeve options too. I always make the long sleeved with the cuff. Um, it's got little pockets on here that are great for just sticking your phone in there. It's a really quick make. So pleased with this. I mean, this is gonna get worn so much. I can picture it over my white button-up shirt, over my chambray button-up shirt. Um, it'll be great over t-shirts. Um, yeah, I'm very glad that I decided to use this fabric for um, this pattern instead of using the sweater knit that I had in my stash. I just think this is going to read so much better, um, a little bit richer. I, I love this color. This is on my color chart, and it's just a very expensive looking color. I think it makes everything look really, cla it's a classic color, makes everything look expensive. I love this with navy. Navy is also in my winter capsule. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited that I decided to do this. And this just came off the sewing machine yesterday, so I haven't had a chance to wear it, but man, I'm excited to get it in my closet. <laughs> it's gonna get worn a ton. So there you have it. There are the three things that I made with my Distashify order from November. So that is what I got made up. Now, let's talk about what I grabbed for December and kind of my plans. This time, I grabbed yarn. So, and there's still more of this left. I only um, grabbed three skeins of this, and this is um, Yarn Rehab, Rehabilitation for the Yarn Bereft. Um, this is Meadowcroft Dye Works. So I would assume this is like a hand-dyed yarn. Um, and I think there were 11 skeins of this 
from the seller. So I will leave it down below because again, I only bought three. But it's got all of these really bright colors. And I feel like the colorway was called like something with Elvis, like uh, something about Elvis. I can't remember now though. Okay, so these are obviously very saturated, bright colors, and there is some black in there. So what I am going to do, I am just really loving, I mean, quite a few of my past, um, I don't even know how many now, I'm on my third, I guess, of doing the um, fingering weight like merino wool, and this might be super wash merino wool. I'll have to check again on the listing, because I don't think it says on here. There isn't a ton of information on the, oh wait, no, it's right here. <laughs> Black Light Elvis is what it's called. Um, yeah, this has got some nylon in it because it's a sock, it's a fingering weight, so like a sock weight um, nylon, and then it's the Superwash Merino, are the fibers. And um, yeah, 468 yards for a skein, fingering weight. So um, what I love about it is that um, this will be easy to wash. And I knit one of the fingering weight with one silk mohair lace weight. So I knit those together, and it just makes the most gorgeous fabric. So I've done two projects like that. I did my no frill sweater and then my sweater vest that you haven't seen yet. I'm going to be doing a knitting kind of a catch you up, show you my sweater vest, show you what I've been working on, all that kind of stuff. Video here soon, show you my spinning wheel, all that kind of stuff um, that I think will be up either Friday or next week. I'm, I'm filming it all right now. Um, but one of the things, and then I'm working on a no frill sweater right now for my daughter, but one of the things that I love about that is that you can take that silk uh, mohair lace weight yarn, even though it is so skinny, it is amazing to me how what color you choose for that can really determine what the final fabric looks like. Um, it, I just find it fascinating, and I love working with dyed yarns that change color. I just find them, um, you know, they keep my brain occupied, even if I'm just stitching and or uh, knitting and stocking at stitch um i just i just find i don't know it keeps me more um excited about things it's not like my white sweater vest that took me forever because it was just white <laughs> i find that i just i i just am more focused and more um goal oriented i don't know i just get through those projects better when i'm using a yarn and as it's changing color and stuff so what i've decided to do with these i think i'm gonna look for a um mohair that is maybe like a dark brown um, to where it'll warm these colors up just a little bit because you know like that green like that's not that's too cool for me and even the pink they're just a little this one this is a good color for me but um and some of the purples are okay but some of these are just a little too um cool not all of them but some of them and even the black I want that to go a little warmer too um so I think I'm going to try and find a dark brown um mohair Either that or a really warm gray. I'm kind of going back and forth to those to knit these together. And I'm go I'm up in the air with what pattern I want to make. Uh, Petite Knits has a whole bunch of these type of patterns where you're knitting with two and it includes like a um, fingering weight and then a lace weight. They also have some where you're just using two lace weights. Um, it, it makes a beautiful fabric. It just really, it's lightweight. Um, it, so it's not super chunky. It has some drape, but it's very warm. I am just shocked with how lightweight my no frill sweater feels, but it's so insulating and so warm. You know, I put like a little turtleneck underneath it or whatever, and it is, it's, I could be in really cold weather. It's my go-to. I'll use it for layering a lot when I'm going to cold soccer games, but I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful sweater. I get, I wear it as is, um, as well, but it just, yeah, the combination is just fantastic. So, um, I'm kind of thinking, this may become a cardigan actually, and I'm eyeing the April cardigan by Petite Knits. Um, that's one I've wanted to knit up, and I also have some like brick red um, colorway that's um, both the fingering weight and the lace weight are the same color. I'm afraid that's gonna get boring, but it'll be fine. <laughs> I need some solid, like actual solid stuff in my um, wardrobe as well. But um, I kind of think I might do the April cardigan. That could be fun. Unless I just decide to do a pullover, and maybe I'll just do the no frills again. Although I'm knitting my second one right now for my daughter, and you know, I don't know, I might get bored. But I have a sweater in between the one I'm currently knitting and this one, so you know, maybe it'll be okay. Um, I'm be doing the balloon sweater by Petite Knit, I think, next. 
So this would be also be an option. I could also do the balloon sweater if I wanted to. Um, someone said that Tin Can Knits, though, also has a um, fingering weight and lace weight pattern that's out, and I really like their patterns as well, so I'm going to go take a look at that. But um, obviously, I will not get this sweater knitted up before the end of January. <laughs> Because I have a sweater in between the one that's all currently on my needles and this um, in the queue uh, anyway. But I hopefully at the end of January, I'll be able to show you my progress on this and then also um, be able to show you what I've grabbed for January. So I will leave a link down below. Um, these are $24 a skein. So I did pay. I only had enough um, gift card to buy two of these and I needed three. Um, I find that a little over 1200 yards is enough for me to do um, what I wanna do with it. So for the size that I do. So I did buy just three of these and there are more left and I'll leave them linked down below. So um, these are being sold right now for $24 a skein. Um, so it was you know like 75 bucks, but I had a $50 gift card, which is lovely. But that being said, every other hand dyed yarn, and I've purchased quite a bit lately, <laughs> I find even like local stuff is around about 30 bucks a skein. Maybe, um, I'll have to look and see what I just purchased. Maybe I can find some at 25, but for the most part, 30 seems to be, like 29, 30 seem to be the popular price point for hand dyed fingering weight skein of yarn around the 400 to, you know, 475 um, yardage. Um, so yeah, I really felt like it was a good deal um, getting these at 24. So anyway, it is an investment, obviously, and then I still have to buy the silk mohair. But I, again, I'm just, I love knitting it, so <laughs> cheaper than therapy, but also I really, really love wearing it. So, you know, you take it with what, you know, grain of salt and uh, yeah, make your decisions on what's important to you. I'm really hoping that I get, I've asked for a new Swift for um, Christmas, which is the umbrella that you put the skeins on. And so as I'm doing my ball winder, it keeps it all nice and untangled as I'm winding it into a cake. Um, my current one has broken and I've been able to kind of rig it up to where it kind of stays, but that is starting to not work as well and I totally mangled and got my last um, uh, skein of silk mohair that I was trying to wind into a cake all tangled and it's a huge mess because it kind of collapsed on me um, which was unfortunate but I do have a swift on my um, Christmas list so I'll probably wait to wind this until after Christmas I really hope I get it um, it, yeah I'm really fingers crossed <laughs> I really need a new one <laughs> So there you have it guys. Um, I know that this one's going to be knitting this next time, but I'll probably go back to fabric again for next month. So you want to stay tuned for that at the end of January. Um, that's all I have for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this little mini lookbook that I have to share with you all. Um, Okay, so I'm filming a lot of videos this week so that I can take next week off. I mean, I'll still have videos going up next week. You guys won't even notice that I'm gone. So I just really don't know what order I'm going to put things up. But I'm going to be sharing my Rose Claire dress with you in detail. Um, I have a vintage pattern haul I want to share with you. Um, what else? I've got my son, stuff that I've made up for my son that I want to share with you. Um, God, there's one more and I can't think of what the other one is that I'm be filming. Hmm. Yeah. And then after the new year, I've got a pattern release that will be coming shortly. I mean, like pretty close after the new year. Um, it's so good. I cannot wait to share that with you guys. Um, but that's another good one. Oh, my yarn, my knitting. I have a knitting video coming up, um, sharing like a haul that I, um, went to a fiber fest, my spinning wheel, got some, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Show you what I've been knitting. I'll be filming that as well um, this week, so that'll be coming up sometime in the next. I've got like five videos that I'm filming this week that'll be coming up in the next like Tuesday, Friday slots, and then um, Vlogmas videos up this Sunday and the following Sunday, and then I'll be done with those. Okay, that's all I've got. <laughs> Then we'll be starting a sew along again. I'm not sure. I think we'll do a smaller project and then I think we'll go into the Ziggy Jacket by Style Arc after um, the smaller one. I've just got to get my bearings. That's going to be a hefty one to film. So yeah, there you have it guys. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. I hope you are getting all holiday things done and your checklist all counted off but are still unable to enjoy the season and enjoy time with friends and family. Um, 
you know, as much as we can right now. I know things are changing again as they constantly are, but yes, I hope you're able to actually sit and enjoy the season a little bit and having a good week. All right, I will see you on Friday, and until then, have a good one. Bye.